Hi everybody, I'm Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about why you probably should be using a surround receiver, even if you're just listening with two channel, uh, two channel speakers. So, as a reviewer, and as an as a audio consultant slash semi-integrator, I'm not really a full-on integrator, but I have integrators that work with me or work for me that do stuff, so I'll call myself a semi-integrator here. As somebody who has this access and just plays with equipment all the time, constantly, literally have stuff sitting on the floor over here that's going to be what I'm talking about. I have used cheap receivers. I've used expensive receivers. I've used cheap integrated amps. I've used expensive integrated amps. I've used separate amps and preamps. I've used all-in-one little box systems that are like this big, and they have streaming. And I'll tell you that, first and foremost to me, the best equipment is the equipment you want to use. And a lot of people make a big deal about, well, if they have two-channel, they need to have a two-channel receiver. Now, there is this is changing a little bit. Uh, Morant introduced the Stereo 70, and that is basically like a surround receiver in every way, except for it's just got two channels worth of amplification. But for those who don't know that, that's the exact same amplifier module that's used in all the receivers. And it's the same amplifier module used across all of them, including all of the denims. There's no difference in these amplifier modules. The power supply is what's different. And the Stereo 70 has the same power supply in it that's in the lower mid-grade receivers. Now, that doesn't mean that thing is a bad performer. It's a great performer. But in many cases, many manufacturers like Denon, Marantz, and Yamaha, their stereo products have been more compromised than their receivers, and then they cost more money. So they have less features, they have sometimes worse performance, and then they cost more money because they're more niche and because you guys are silly and you'll pay it. And that's part of it, honestly, is our willingness to pay that is what drives doing that. So receivers are a little bit more of a commodity product right now than stereo receivers are. The surround receivers are more of a commodity product than stereo receivers, sorry. So you can get all the same performance from a surround receiver and just not use the channels you're not going to use. It doesn't hurt anything because the sound quality is just as good. But you get extra features. So one of the nice things about a lot of receivers is that down to sometimes the lowest end, or at least the lower end, you get their streaming app system, which allows you to do that. You get AirPlay 2, you get bass management. So even if you're going to use it as two-channel, if you want to add a subwoofer in, it's nice to have bass management. Um, and then you get a pretty potent, decent quality amplifier built into it. And again, if you're not using the other channels and you get all the extra capacity of the power supply that was designed to handle the extra channels for those two that you are using. So in many cases, it's just a better value to go with a receiver than it is to go with a dedicated a surround receiver, I should say, than a dedicated stereo product. I actually have, I think it's called the Model 40. I have this Marantz integrated uh, amplifier. It's really good. I really like it. Um, it's, I think it's two or $3,000 in that range. I forget the exact price. Um, it's got built-in Heos in it. It's streaming. It's got AirPlay. I use it when I'm just looking at like powering some speakers and trying to check out a pair of speakers, something like that. Its build quality is significantly better than a Marantz receiver is, but the cost of it is really high. And the feature set it has, while good for its class of products, is actually pretty low compared to the receivers Marantz sells. And performance-wise, it's not any better than their lower end, not low end, like bottom of the line, but let's say mid-grade receivers that are like half or close to half the price. In fact, for $2,000, you can get a receiver that has better performance than that does. And lots of channels that I understand you're not going to use them, but they're there. So as much as I like this thing, I actually think you get a better value and better performance out of an equivalent priced receiver. And so would I tell somebody not to buy this? No, but I think there's something to be said for going with the receiver. The other thing is this doesn't have any sort of room correction. And there's nothing that says surround systems are special in needing room correction and stereo systems don't. In fact, they probably need it as much or more. So... If you're going to put together a nice high-end two-channel system, I would recommend using a good receiver that's going to have some room correction because it at least gives you some flexibility. Uh, if you want to do manual calibration and manual uh, room correction, you can do Odyssey, and then Odyssey's PC app lets you do a lot of manual control. You can do PEQ filters, for instance, to get everything better. So, so that's my argument for a receiver, uh, a surround receiver, I should say, over a stereo product. Now, obviously, when you get into the really, really high-end stuff, there starts to be an argument for separates, because then you can get into really good amplifiers that have way more power than those receivers have. So you could be getting into 200, 400, 800, 1,000 watts. That's not unreasonable these days. 
with extremely low noise and distortion, and then you can get a preamp that would be able to drive that. That would be better. Um, interestingly enough, uh, I think it's APOS is how you pronounce it, APOS. Um, they sent me a DAC I've been reviewing, but like they have lots of really good stuff, and they have DACs that can be worked as preamps where it's got built to the one I'm using right now has Bluetooth, USB, Toslink, and coaxial inputs. And so it could be the centerpiece of a pretty decent system. It's only got one output, and it doesn't have any inputs on it, um, but like for a lot of systems, especially if you're not using subwoofers, that could be fine. Or some of the systems, the subwoofers actually have a loop out. So you can do from that back into the subwoofer and then out into your amplifiers to power your speakers. And you would end up with an extremely clean, purest system at a relatively modest cost anymore. It's, it's actually kind of impressive what you can get. Um, but outside of stuff like that at that level, which is still way more expensive than these receivers would be, I would just recommend getting a receiver. So I hope you like this video. Uh, keep watching. I got more stuff coming. And like I said, the super thanks are really great. Please subscribe to the channel. That helps me out, um, helps to make all this more worth it. And I can keep answering your questions.